It's being called a milestone for First Nations and Indigenous peoples on the path towards reconciliation. This week, the Senate passed Bill C-15, aimed at aligning Canadian law with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. We have to address the legacy of injustices, including systemic racism and discrimination, that continue to hold back Indigenous peoples across Canada. It's easy to be pessimistic or cynical about the future of reconciliation, but I believe the passage of C-15 represents a sign of progress and a reason to be optimistic. The UN first passed the declaration in 2007 to establish a universal framework of minimum standards for the well-being of Indigenous peoples. It affirms that Indigenous peoples are equal to all other peoples while recognizing the right of all peoples to be different, to consider themselves different and to be respected as such. But the vote was not unanimous and the bill also got a rough ride in the House of Commons from some Conservative MPs. They argued it would give Indigenous people a veto over natural resource projects. The bill will soon receive royal assent and become law ahead of a potential federal election later this year. How will this help reconciliation and what is the response to those who oppose it? Joining us now is Assembly of First Nations National Chief Perry Belgard. Always nice to see you, Grand Chief. Welcome to Question Period. On a more, on a more practical you know, level, I want to ask you, how does this change the life of an Indigenous person in Canada? Just one concrete example. Basically, all the laws and policies that deny existing Aboriginal and treaty rights will have to be changed to get in line with recognition of Aboriginal rights and title and jurisdiction. That's going to be a huge piece because we've got, for example, four pieces of legislation, the comprehensive claims policy, specific claims policy, additions to reserve policy, and the inherent right to self-government policy are all currently based on termination of rights, title and jurisdiction, not recognition of rights, title, and jurisdiction. So with passing of C-15, UN Declaration, all laws and policies will have to get in line. As well, Joyce, it calls for a national action plan to end racism and discrimination. And we know there's racism and discrimination in the healthcare system and in the justice policing system. So there's got to be systemic change in both those systems as well. How, you know, how do you see this happening? Is it, would it, would it be something that would happen gradually would there be discussions on every law? Um, you know, you look at this, to the layman, it looks like an enormous amount of work that, would, that could take years and years. Well, that's why we put a two-year time frame in. There's got to be a two-year. and done. This, this national action plan has to be done in partnership and collaboration, communication with First Nations people. That's very key. And so we've got two years for the federal government, the Crown, to get this done in partnership with our people. So there is a process and a plan in place, and it really is indeed a roadmap to reconciliation. See, but the, the Conservatives in the House and in the Senate opposed the bill, and uh, a number of Conservative Premiers as well also you know, opposed uh, this legislation. What does that say about reconciliation in Canada when one of the major parties does not support this? Well, I think they were concerned with free, prior, informed consent, you know, and uh, some of the premiers are concerned this is going to have an impact on land and resource development in the provinces and territories. We've said before, when you involve the rights and title holders involved in any major development uh, across any sector, that makes good sense. Involve the rights and title holders sooner than later. That creates economic certainty, economic stability. And so that's the key going forward. So this is a good thing for provinces and territories in Canada. Um, we still, we'll, we're still available to help educate people, premiers, leaders uh, of the Conservative Party, about the, the good things about this bill and how it really will benefit not only First Nations people, but all Canadians to really embrace reconciliation going forward. I'd like to move to, um, uh, to the issue, uh, sad issue of residential schools this week. Uh, the Ontario uh, government promised $10 million to help find and locate the remains of children who died at residential schools in Ontario who may be buried on the grounds there. There are 21 uh, residential schools in Ontario. So do you think 
this is enough money to get the job done? Everything is a start, Joyce. And we've, you know, the federal government announced 27 million. Provinces are stepping up to the plate. We have over 130 plus residential school sites where little ones have been buried, unmarked graves, mass graves. It's a, it's a genocide of our people. So governments are hearing and listening and they are providing resources. I would just say that once needs have been identified and once the chiefs and council and the elders and survivors come forward with a plan to get this work done, that the financial and the financial resources and the human resources should be put in place based on needs. And so everything is a start. When, but if you base everything on needs, once they're identified, they should be met, whether it be federal government, provincial governments are, are you know, working collaboratively together to make sure that this work gets done. So what are you hearing, uh, uh, Perry Belgard, on the ground? What are those needs? What are you know, these communities telling you? Uh, how do they want to go forward? They want to go forward very respectfully. This is uh, spiritual. This is sacred. This is human beings, little ones, children that have lost their lives, that have been killed and buried and put into to unmarked graves. So there's a, a sacredness of this work. There's a spirituality of this work. So the elders have to be brought together. The families, the community, the survivors have to be brought together. Uh, the, the right technology has to be brought together. So this will be uh, very careful work going forward, spiritual work going forward. We just got to make sure it's done in a very respectful way. Grand Chief Perry Belgard, thanks so much for sharing these thoughts with us. Thanks for the opportunity, Joyce.